Hi everyone, and welcome to the first video production from PetsandTicks.com. My name's Katie, and I'm one of the veterinarians behind Pets and Ticks. Today, we're going to go over something that's very important, and that's how to identify a tick sample. Sometimes, we do need to use a microscope to accurately identify the tick species. However, we're going to go over some basic skills today so that you might be able to identify some of your samples at home with the naked eye. So in this video, we're going to look at some basic tick anatomy, then go over some common tick species in Canada, and finally look at a few samples. So here's a basic diagram of tick anatomy showing the features that you can see without a microscope. On the top side of the tick, you can see the palps and the basis capitulae, which together form a structure called the capitulum. You can also see the legs. Adults and nymphs have eight legs, while larvae, which is the youngest stage, only have six. Festoons are present along the bottom. These aren't present on all species, but you can easily see them on those that do have them. And finally, there's the scutum, which can be ornate, meaning patterned, or inornate, meaning solid in color. If you flip the tick over, again, you can see the capitulum. You can also see the coxa, which are the structures where the legs attach to the base of the tick. And finally, you can see the anus and the anal groove which I know sounds funny, but these features are surprisingly important for tick identification. So now that you know a little bit more about tick anatomy, we can apply this knowledge to help us look at photos of real tick samples. So the first thing you wanna do is identify the anus and the anal groove, then examine the scutum, and then assess the palps and the basis capitulae. So let's look at this a bit further. To look at the anus, of course, you need to flip the tick over. And then, identify the anus on the bottom part of the tick. If there's a groove that loops over the anus, then you know the tick is an exodes species. But just be careful not to confuse this with the larger groove that stretches and extends almost more than halfway up the tick. That's a completely different structure. So if there's a groove, but it loops underneath the anus, then we know that this is a non exodi species of tick. Then, flip the tick right side over and look at the scutum. In adults, which is the most common life stage of ticks found on our pets, the scutum can help you determine if the tick is male or female. If the scutum only covers half of the back, then it is female. And if it covers the whole back, then it's male. You should also make note of whether the scutum is ornate, so patterned, like it is in this case, or inornate, meaning solid in color, and we'll see a, an example of this later on. The next thing we want to do is look at the capitulum and compare the length of the palps to the length of the basis capitulae. These images show you two different combinations. On the left-hand side, you see long, thin palps, which means the palps are much longer than the length of the basis capitulae, which is the bottom arrow. On the right hand side, you see short, broad palps. These palps are about the same length as the basis capitulae. Finally, you can also look at the shape of the basis capitulae. To note, ticks can be very small, so you may not be able to differentiate the shape of this feature with the naked eye. But if you can, some species have a rectangular basis capitulae, as shown on the left, and one species of interest to us has a hexagonal shaped basis capitulae, which is shown on the right. So now we're gonna look at some common species. You will find most of these images on our website too, whenever you need a refresher. So the first species that we're gonna look at is Exodi scapularis, or the black-legged tick. And this is the tick that we're most concerned about right now in Canada because it's been expanding its range dramatically. To note, in British Columbia, the predominant Exodes species is Exodes pacificus, or the western black-legged tick. This tick does appear the same to the naked eye, but we can differentiate them under a microscope. So as you see here in this picture, they have long palps and an inornate scutum, so this solid brown area. 
And as you see, because the sputum is only half the back, this is a female tick. The next species is Ixodes cookii, or the groundhog tick. And here, the biggest differentiation between this tick and the black-legged tick is the fact that the sputum is quite angled versus oval with the black-legged tick. The next photo that we see is of a female Dermacenter variabilis, or the American dog tick. If you live out west, you might more commonly see the rocky mounted wood tick, Dermacenter andersoni. Both of these species appear very similar, but again, we can differentiate them under a microscope. This tick species has short rod palps, an ornate sputum, so you can see this pattern sputum, and then there's also festoons. This photo shows a picture of Amblyoma americanum, or the lone star tick. This tick is not native to Canada, but we do see it occasionally as it's brought in on birds. This tick provides us with a great example of very long thin palps and also festoons along the bottom. She is very easily recognized because of her characteristic yellow spot on the back, which is labeled the star and where she gets her name. And finally, we have the brown dog tick. This tick is very rarely seen in Canada and is most common to the southern United States, but is occasionally introduced generally when pets travel. This tick has short broad palps, a hexagonal shaped basis capituli, and festoons. So now we're going to apply some of these skills and look at a couple different tick samples. If you're at home, the best way to look at a tick sample is put it on a white background, so a paper towel or a piece of paper, and find a really good light source. So maybe a couple extra flashlights or a really good flashlight on your cell phone. So in this image, we have two tick samples. And remember what I said, the first thing we wanna do is flip the tick over, like they are, and then look for the anus and the anal groove. So on the left hand side, we can identify the anus and then there's an anal groove that goes above the anus. So we know that this tick is an Ixodes species. The tick on the right hand side, if we find the anus, the groove is actually below the anus and therefore we know that this species of tick is not a, an Ixodes species. Now let's flip the ticks right side over. So the tick on the left, you can see that the sputum is inornate, so it doesn't have any patterning, and only covers half the back. So this is definitely a female tick. And so this tick is a black-legged tick, Ixodes scapularis. On the right-hand side, we see that the sputum covers the entire back of the tick and is patterned. If you look carefully, you can see short, broad palps. This is a male American dog tick, or Dermacenter variabilis. So, after this video, if you're still having difficulties identifying a tick, which is completely okay, you can send us a photo or submit your tick to us. If you're taking a photo, the best way to do it is to place the tick on a white backdrop and take a a close-up photo of both the top and the underside of the tick. If you're sending in your sample, make sure to include a damp cotton ball or piece of paper just to keep the tick moist. So thank you for watching our first video and please visit PetsandTicks.com for more information.